Hello, this is Inky Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Destiny of an Emperor. Let's make our preparations to take down Zhang Liang of the Yellow Scars. The next place I want to go to is our headquarters, or the billet. You can tell because it, the building is a lot longer than all the other ones in town. And this is where you can leave party members behind and bring them back later if you want to. So to remove one, use the delete member command. And I want to leave both Song Young and Song Ren here because they're both pretty terrible. But I could bring them back later with the new member command. Or I could permanently remove them from the party with the fire command. But I don't want to do that because if I did, then I could encounter them later in a random battle. And I don't want to do that. So we'll just leave them here and they'll be fine. I'm not doing that because of like any split experience or anything. There's only one level that you have and that's the level of your entire army not for each individual warlord that you've got and over here we've got the provision shop not that i'm ever going to use it but if you needed more i guess you could buy more but i think that's pretty pointless so why don't we just uh, get out of here you know one thing i really like about this game is how fast you move around Whee! Look at him go! Way faster than a Final Fantasy or a Dragon Quest game. Oh, yeah, I guess I spoiled that a bit before the game told us that. Usually, 8-bit games don't give you tutorial information like that. Not enough memory capacity. But I do want to rearrange my party order now that we've got Mije available. So, yeah, let's uh, rework that. That ought to be good. Now I want to buy some equipment, which I can do up here. You can tell it's a weapon shop because it has a square frame to the door and it has a light reddish colored roof. That's not always the case, but usually that's the weapon shop. They also sell armor here as well. Namely, the bandana. I want to get four of those for my entire party there. I don't want to buy stronger weapons because we'll find a whole bunch early in the game so yeah no point in wasting money on that one bandana for everyone will be good so in this game you only have three equipment slots your weapon your armor and your headgear it doesn't matter what order they're in in your inventory but i like to kind of keep things a little organized there so, yeah, bandanas are much more cost-efficient than, like, the leather armor, which is even stronger than the robe, but I'll get those a bit later in the game. And over here, we've got the item shop, which has the fancy door frame there, but it isn't at the very entrance of town. Usually, that's what armor item shops are, but not always. There are some towns that are a little different. Unfortunately, they don't have these symbols indicating what the shop is outside of the building there. So here they sell elixirs. Do they restore your HP and MP? No. No, that's another game, viewers. Uh, this one just restores 100 soldiers for a warlord. Resurrect revives one of your warlords. A steed can be used to bribe an enemy general to joining your party or your army but yeah i'm not going to do that right now and gold wings are basically the same thing as wings of wyvern they'll take you back to a town of your choice but the early game is pretty small so i don't think i need them right now but eventually i will be using a lot of them to get around china Oh, right. Nice of you to tell me after I've been on the overworld. It seems like critical need-to-know information game. Who lives here? No one! Okay, never mind then. Let's see, one more dude up here. Oh, right, yeah, I've already... 
yeah, gotten plenty of provisions. So now, let's head north to Qingzhou Castle. Let's see, I would like to have a random battle before getting up there. And here we've got some new enemies, bandit forces. These guys are just generic enemies, nothing really special about them. But let's see, for the random battle commands, we have, well, battle, that's your individual attack command. All Out will have your generals just randomly attack enemies over and over and over again and win a battle relatively quickly so you don't have to go through the individual battle text for each attack you use. Tactic is, well, your tactics or, well, you need a tactician to do that. Basically like your magic command, essentially, except instead of MP, you have tactics points. Retreat lets you run away. Defend cuts all damage in half, physical or tactical. Item command lets you use a consumable item if you have it. And report lets you look up the stats of an individual enemy. So let's see, I'm gonna do my attacks like this and then I'll explain why. Uh, part of how physical damage works is that there's a multiplier based on the number of soldiers a general has, which makes logical sense. Uh, the way it works is that for each digit of soldiers you have, square that number to determine your multiplier. So with at least 100 soldiers, uh, everyone would have a damage multiplier of 9. So as a result, I want to reduce all enemy generals to below 100 soldiers as soon as possible to reduce that multiplier to 4, cutting their damage by more than half. This is also known as the power of 10 rule. So when you get up to 1,000 soldiers, you'll get a multiplier of 16, and then 25 at 10,000 soldiers. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, unfortunately, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei have exactly 100 soldiers. So yeah, if anyone even breathes on them, they lose a big chunk of their damage, unfortunately. Okay, so now that we've gotten only one, now let's use the all-out command here to wrap things up. I just didn't want to use it earlier because it would spread out my damage randomly, and I want to focus on each general one at a time. But you could do whatever you want with that. Okay, so that's everything we've got there. I think we're good to go. You insolent fools! Well, it's not that small. For boss time! Okay, so let's see. Let's see, let's see what stats uh, Zhang Liang has there. So he's got quite a bit of strength at this point in the game. Well, 102, which is more than double than that of the rebel forces. And uh, physical damage is, uh, let's see, uh, directly proportional to your strength. So based on that alone, he's going to deal more than double damage of the rebel forces. Not to mention the weapon and soldier multipliers that he has as well. So get the rebel forces below... 100 soldiers, and then have everyone go all out against Zhang Liang there. And, yeah, it's gonna take a little while to be there. Unfortunately, I don't want to use the... Uh, let's see, the all out command here. Because that would spread out my damage with the rebel forces. And Zhang Liang is a much bigger threat. Although you, you could do it and probably win the battle more quickly that way but I prefer more surgical precision let's put it that way with my attacks let's see if Guan Yu gets too low on soldiers I could have him defend there 
I think defend, you have to actually do it before enemies attack you for it to actually help you there. But yeah, as you can see, the rebel forces are dealing negligible damage to us. So don't worry about them. Uh-oh. And we're getting a little lighter there. A little uh, slow there to get, get them below 100 soldiers there. Oh well, we'll be fine. Now, during these fixed boss encounters, the enemies will almost always take less physical damage than they would during a random battle. Uh, this is because every fixed encounter in the game has a hidden castle defense multiplier, even if they are not in a castle. If you encounter one in a dungeon, they would still have something for that. So there are some ways of working around this, but not until a bit later in the game. So for now, there's, yeah, don't really worry about that or anything. We'll be fine. But yeah, that's one little uh, element of, I guess, realism they add to the battles there. I like that. It's a nice touch. They don't exactly tell you that in-game, though. Usually they don't. I know there's one instance where there's like a, a plot point regarding that. But that's not until uh, quite a bit later in the game. Alright, one more to go. So yeah, now we can just afford to go all out. Now, by the way, when you do use the all out command, enemies can still use tactics on you, even though they're not being announced. Ha ha. So yeah, that's one, another drawback of using the all out command. Although at this point in the game, yeah, they don't have any tactics. And for defeating them, we gain a level. All right. So, uh... When you gain a level, you can learn a tactic, and certain generals, in this case Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, will increase their maximum number of soldiers that they have available there. And we learned our first tactic, Lian Huo. Very nice. And if you do gain a tactic, or learn a tactic, when you gain a level, you'll also increase your maximum TP or MTP, as it's shown there in the lower right there. So where do we find the next stronghold of the Yellow Scars? Find out next time on Let's Play Destiny of an Emperor. This is Chi Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!